edition of the Wet Spotlight. I'm Cameron, I'll be our narrator for this go around. And for this edition, we're going to be focusing on a rather lovely little community fish, one that I haven't really kept in a very long time. The Celebes, or sometimes also called Celebes Rainbow Fish. Uh, Marosatherina latages eye. It's in the order of Theraniformes, the silver sides and rainbows and some of their allies. Uh, the old world silver sides, and they're in the family, along with many uh, also commonly seen rainbow fish. Uh, Melanotaniidae is going to be the, the bulk of those guys. The etymology behind these, I would say, is quite interesting. Uh, Maros is the name of the town that they're almost exclusively found in, in Sulawesi, Indonesia. So not a huge spread there, although they do occur in a decent amount of habitats. Atherina is the type genus for the order that these fish belong to. Uh, on the whole, Atheriniformes consists of roughly 350 species. Uh, as scientists continue to learn more about these animals and describe them, of course, the numbers will fluctuate. Uh, I know it's a big debate right now, even within just this family, Melanotaniidae, whether to lump some species together, whether to describe a lot of the newer uh, locations and different fish that we're seeing as new species, so it is a bit in flux. Uh, the whole order are named after the elongated and silvery color that a lot of them tend to exhibit, especially more of the silver sides. Uh, and of course, rainbow fish in general, this whole family is a big exception to that rule. It's hard to find a, just a silver fish in the whole bunch. Uh, the whole group are found worldwide in tropical and temperate marine and freshwater environments, so there is a pretty wide spread uh, as to where this group as a whole will be, which means that they can be quite adaptable in many cases. Uh, Latage's eye, like some other species, uh, for example, uh, the jelly bean tetra is named after the same ichthyologist. Uh, the species epithet refers to the ichthyologist Werner Ladiges, the director of the Zoological Museum in Hamburg, Germany, who is the original collector of these fish. For many years, this species was included in the genus Telmatherina, and in a lot of aquarium literature, especially older books, and on some website sites even, uh, it's still listed in that genus, uh, although we typically accept it as Marosatherina. It is the only species in that genus, which is rather interesting. There's nothing that's exactly quite like it. I always like those monospecific genera. Uh, unfortunately, due to habitat loss, due to deforestation, and to an extent, uh, overfishing for the aquarium trade, it is listed as vulnerable according to the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species. Uh, the good news is, can't do much about the deforestation at the moment, unfortunately, for the aquarium hobby, but this fish is captive bred, as all of our specimens are, on fish farms in Asia or Europe or really kind of the world over, which does mean that it's pretty rare to see wild-caught specimens. That does mean the fish will have a good chance to recover. Uh, personally, I can't recall, honestly, ever seeing wild-caught specimens of this species available. Marosatherina latages eye grows to about 5-6 centimeters long on average. For those of you not super well versed in metric, that's going to be about 2-2.5 two, two inches. They are slender and almost transparent at times. Uh, a schooling species that do have, as you can see, that beautiful blue stripe that runs along the lateral line. Uh, males are larger and darker in color than females. A lot more going on there, although females are still quite attractive. Uh, and the males will also have elongated black colored uh, second ventral and dorsal fins as well. You can see on a lot of these, they're uh, quite a bit more extended just in general. Sorry, ladies, this is a species where the male just looks better. Uh, during courtship, and even sometimes when they're flaring up or just swimming around, as you can see here, jostling for position, uh, males will become even more vibrant in color, and their fins will exhibit even more black than usual as they flare them out, like a lot of other Melanotaniids will do. In the wild, they spend a lot of times, as I mentioned, in large groups, hiding amongst the leaves of plants, grazing on little invertebrates on the plants, you know, small worms, small crustaceans, things like that. 
uh, and displaying amongst themselves, kind of like you're seeing here, to establish dominance as well as attract potential mates. Uh, in captivity, they do make a really good addition to most harder water community tanks. Uh, doesn't have to be rock hard, but preferably uh, a little bit more mineral content in that water, I found. Like other rainbow fish, they can be a little skittish. You definitely want to make sure to have a group that's as large as possible. Preferably a mixed sex group of at least six to eight, although larger is always better. Uh, we have found as well that if they're the first fish in a tank or if there's not a lot else going on, they can be a little bit more prone to hiding. So it's kind of another incentive to keep them in that nice big group to get them to come out. Males are encouraged to display their best colors when they are in those big groups, and especially when having some ladies to flare out for. Uh, we do recommend that you typically provide about two to three females per male for the best results, less so for aggression and more so to just draw out that color as well as see that really interesting uh, interspecific uh, interaction. If there aren't enough females in the group, they will be a little bit feister to each other. Again, nothing life-threatening, but a bit more chasing, uh, quite a bit more of the aggressive sparring or flaring. Uh, they're next to harmless to each other, though, and to other fish, I would say, as long as they're not microscopic, literal fry. Good tank mates for these include Melanotania praecox or Melanotania maculicae, larger live bears like Swampers heleri and Spiphodon species, as well as things like Chlamydogobia ceramius or Hypseliotris compressa. A lot of nice harder water, very adaptive community fish since these are quite peaceful so long as nobody can pick on them, they're normally a good bet. Uh, all of those, I would say, make great tank mates. They do kind of have some sort of natural affinity for each other, maybe less so the sword tails, but some of the others at least occur with something similar to these fish. Uh, they can be found in mildly brackish habitats, as we mentioned as well, should you opt to keep them as such, although you are under no obligation to do so. Uh, in this tank, I believe we're keeping them around 7.3 pH. Uh, a good tank mate for them would be something like molly types, Pacilius fenops, or Pacilia latipina if you have enough room. Certain half-beak species and some brackish species of gobies. Uh, breeding for these guys is going to be fairly straightforward. Like a lot of other Melanotanids, they're going to spend a lot of time just kind of scattering eggs willy-nilly, which can then be collected out of the roots of floating plants or breeding mops. In the wild, these fish would feed primarily on insects, insect larvae, bits of just kind of whatever, for lack of a more scientific term, that's floating around with more of a carnivory lean. In captivity, they're not picky in the slightest and will eat pretty much everything offered to them. Like here, you can see them feeding. Uh, we do recommend a staple diet of high quality dry foods or small pellets or flakes while also making sure to mix in regular feedings of frozen cyclops or daphnia or brine shrimp for best color and growth. And of course, as with pretty much every fish I can think of, they're not gonna turn their noses up at live food, especially if you're trying to increase yields from breeding. These fish, as we mentioned earlier, are endemic, meaning they're found only in one certain spot to the island of Sulawesi, which was formerly known as Celebes, or Celebes, thus the common name of the fish in Indonesia, more specifically in clear, slow-flowing streams and in estuary and environments near the town of Maros, with those estuaries, of course, being where the river meets the ocean. The water that these fish come from does have high levels of dissolved oxygen, so make sure there's air stones or bubblers or decent current from a filter. Uh, just to make sure that they're all right there, and the water can vary a little bit in terms of its composition. Contrary to popular belief, they don't necessarily need the addition of salt in the water. Uh, in many older aquarium books, I found it will mention these as being more exclusively brackish, but the same is true of rope fish or eels or a bunch of half beaks and a lot of fish that we now know better that don't necessarily have to be kept in those conditions. 
we found that they typically do best, like a lot of their close cousins, in some planted tanks with dark sand or fine gravel, again, preferably darker without necessarily going black, uh, as well as some smooth river cobbles, maybe a few pieces of driftwood or smooth rocks, and lots of open swimming space. These aren't going to be jetting around everywhere, but they do appreciate quite a bit of room. The presence of floating plants, depending on your flow rate, such as frogbit, water lettuce, salvinia, will do wonders in bringing them out because it does make that light a bit more dappled and help diffuse it. Uh, they're not always going to be in the brightest area. Small power head, if you so choose, is always a good call just to provide that nice gentle current for them to swim into, which is always nice. Just make sure to keep them clean. Again, they're very adaptable to a wide variety of parameters, but they do need that water to be pretty crystal clear, low dissolved uh, amounts of nitrogenous waste. Thank you as always for joining us for yet another edition of our Wet Spotlight. Be sure to of course like our videos, subscribe, and check our social media to be kept on the breaking cusp of everything else that we're putting out. And of course, if you like the fish you saw, just make sure to check out our stock list at wetspottropicalfish.com and peruse the fish of your dreams. Thanks for watching everyone.